Welcome back. At this point, you've already aligned and assembled all your data, and you would like to do a full ShapeFinder analysis using the ShapeFinder software. First, you must locate the data that you have already aligned and assembled. Here we have our wild type plus one, minus one, DDA, DDU assembled file. In this, we have our plus reagent, our minus reagent, our DDA ladder, and our DDU ladder all assembled into four filters. So we'll go ahead and load that into ShapeFinder. We see that we get this. The blue coordinating to the first filter, which is the plus reagent, green according to the second filter with his minus reagent, black which is the third filter which is the DDA ladder, and red which is the fourth filter which is the DDU ladder. So if you go ahead and look and you can see your data, you can basically play with this little slider here on the side which does visual scaling, so just put everything on the same scale. You can also adjust the zoom of the data for how much you see on the screen at one time. You can see the peaks are very, very tight and jagged here. I like to keep it at about a 200% zoom. Makes it a little bit easier to see the actual peaks themselves. Other things you can do with the display options, you can split the channels. So you can keep them split all, which is the way it's set right now. All four channels are split. Or you can split it half, where the first two filters are overlaid and the second two filters are overlaid. Or you can overlay them all on top of each other, all four. This might be helpful if you're trying to visualize four runs of a plus reagent at the same time. With the symbol CEQ, you can choose any four filters you like, and if you chose four plus reagents to compare, you could use this comparison to make sure that they're all reproducible. But right now, we're going through the full shape finder analysis using the ladders, so we're going to keep it split at all four. The first thing you want to do is take a look at your tool inspector. Come down here, you see there are plenty of tools to use to help set up your data. Um, the main tools we're going to use are fitted baseline adjust, filter convolution, signal decay correction, and align and integrate. And I'm going to go through all those steps in a few minutes. The second thing you want to take a look at here is your scripting inspector. Every time you use the tool inspector and you apply a tool to this data, it's going to show up in the scripting inspector. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to do a fitted baseline adjust to bring all the data to the same baseline. Right now, things aren't exactly on the fit same base, so we'll just go ahead and apply that. The second tool you want to use is filter convolution. Basically what this do, will do is smooth out the peaks um, if they can be a little more jagged than they look right now depending on how they come out of your CEQ. So we're going to go ahead and do filter convolution, hit append. You can see the peaks get a little bit more smoothed out. It's not going to affect your data too much. Make sure you only use filter convolution once or else your results can end up being a little skewed towards the end. The next step we're going to choose is a signal decay correction which helps adjust for scaling issues that can happen when your data comes out of the CEQ. It basically will put them all in the same frame. So what you want to do is you want to choose a range of your data where you have a good amount of data, but it's also not including your RT peak. So right here we have our RT peak, and we're going to go ahead and just choose an area directly to the right of that. And we're going to come up all the way to the right, and just including our primer front. So here's our primer front. We're just going to go right on the right side of that. So this is our signal decay area. As you can see, it's going to cut out a little bit of the data to the left of the RT peak, which is perfectly fine. So with this tool, you have to apply it to each filter one at a time. With fitted baseline adjust and filter convolution, it applies to all four at once. Signal decay correction, you have to do one at a time. So another tricky thing with um, ShapeFinder and the tool inspector is that we have these buttons down here, append, replace, insert. Whenever, anytime you use the tool inspector and you want to apply that tool, you have to choose append. So we're going to go ahead and click append for our signal decay for our first filter. You can see our first filter cuts off the RT peak and we have our data right here. We'll apply the second filter, but look here, the append button has switched places. This is where you really want to pay attention to what you're exactly you're clicking. So if you click append again, we're going to get our second trace, our third trace, and our fourth trace. But here, if you look, this arrow indicates which step we're at. If you were to click this delete button, it would undo the last step that you just did. So it deletes whatever is directly to the right of your blue little arrow here. So let's just go ahead and try that just to show you. Here we go, it undid signal decay. Everything's back to the way it was. So we're going to go ahead and just reapply the signal decay correction again, directly to the right of the RT peak, but include the primer front. Again, and you have to apply it to one channel at a time. So first channel, append. But our second channel, our append button jumped places now. It's on the left side, so we'll click append again. Third channel, append. Fourth channel, append. And you can see the data kind of scaling itself as you go through the signal decay correction. And everything seems to be on a pretty good intensity level. Everything's pretty much there. So you can play with this uh, scaling issue here. Depending on how tall you like your peaks, you can adjust it however you like. 
Now, the next tool we're going to use is Align and Integrate. This is where you tell the computer where the actual shape data is that you would like to analyze. So we're going to go ahead and choose Align and Integrate. Now, we have this little setup here. You have to go through the step each time you do Align and Integrate. So it knows the first channel is the plus reagent, second channel is the minus reagent, and what you do it doesn't know is what your ladders are, that you are using. So the ladders we're using for the third filter is a DDA ladder, and our fourth filter is a DDU ladder. Next you have to do is choose the range over which the data you want to be applied. So you come right to the left of the primer front, and go ahead and highlight the entire area where the data is. You'll see after the signal decay correction that the uh, RT peak has been cut off, and that's okay. So we're just going to go ahead and highlight the rest of our data. It gives you a range for that you highlighted. And the last thing you have to do is tell it what your sequence is. So we're going to go ahead and just apply our sequence right here. There we go. Now we're all set to use the Align and Integrate tool. Now what it's going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to assign about 95% of the peaks to these peaks. There we go. Cool. So what it did is about 95% of the peaks are there. The computer does a lot of the work for you, which is great. The tough part that really makes this analysis hard is going through and fixing the peaks that the computer was not able to find correctly. And if you look right here, we see some very distinct peaks that the computer was not able to find. We have about three peaks in here that aren't necessarily on peaks. So what you have to do now is click on the Modify button to modify the computer assigned peaks. And we have two functions here, Delete and Add. Add is the manual insertion of the peaks, essentially, and delete is the deletion of the peaks. But the tricky thing is, you cannot delete a manually assigned peak with a delete function. You can only delete computer assigned peaks with this delete function. So what you have to do is you have to come in here, and you can click on the peak in the first filter. Anytime there's a peak in the first filter, it will usually tie it to a peak in the second filter. It, this peak in the second filter won't af appear if you don't have a peak in the first filter. It just doesn't have anything tied to, so it doesn't even bother. So again, we just clicked on our first peak in our first filter. Go ahead and click Delete. Gets rid of the whole thing, no problem. You can also delete more than one peak at a time. So we're going to go ahead and click on the box for the other two boxes that we want to delete here. Again, adds them to a little list here. And we're going to delete. Beautiful. All right, now we want to re-add those peaks using the Add function. So we're going to go in here. We're going to find the peak where we believe is in our first filter, click on the spot, click on it in the second filter to tie it to. Usually it's about a straight line. They're pretty much, if the alignment worked correctly, you should have pretty much up and down peaks. And we'll go ahead and see 4787, 4787, the plus reagent and the minus reagent. And we'll go ahead and click append. Beautiful. No problem. Now, you can also, just like you can delete more than one peak at a time, you can also add more than one peak at a time. So I'm going to go ahead and add peak back in here and add one back in here. Perfect. There we go. If you, as you can see, the first peak that it added here isn't necessarily right on top of the peak. What you can do now is you can go into this little Excel tab sheet here, and you can adjust the positioning of those peaks themselves. So right now it's at 4747, but it, we'd want it to be a little bit more to the left. So I'm going to make it 4745. We'll hit Enter, hit Append, and there you go. Shifts it right up to the top of the peak there. Beautiful. Now we want to go through and fix all the other assigned peaks that the computer might have misplaced. Essentially what you want to look for is gaps in between the peaks, you know, unusually large gaps, um, angled lines like this where it seems that the data isn't straight up and down. You might want to fix that just a little bit, so we're going to delete that one there and just re-add it using a straight line. All right. Again, just going to go ahead and keep looking through for any misspotted peaks. And you might not see them on the first try. You definitely develop an eye for this kind of analysis after doing it several times. And go ahead and see here, we got some angles going on to the background. So we're just going to go ahead and fix those. So if you click on a spot in the background without actually clicking on a spot in the uh, first filter, it will show you this little line here, and you can see where it really should line up. And we can see this one's off. So as soon as I click on this back filter, I'm going to click Append here, and it straightens it out a little bit. You can keep doing this until you get it as straight as you like, but it's, the program might not respond. Again, see, we got some crookedness in here. Let's go ahead and line those up by clicking on the second filter. I'm going to straighten those out. 
again, we see some crookedness and conjoining where we'd really like them to be evenly spaced. So we're just going to go ahead and space these out a little more. All right, no problem. All right, so the majority of the peaks, it looks all right. But obviously, there are still some peaks missing because our sequence along the bottom here does not line up perfectly with the actual sequence itself.